Hello again, so um, what we want to do now is uh, just a quick modeling exercise, just a two-story house. Um, so the first thing we want to begin with um, is drawing the walls. Um, as you can see here, if you go on the architecture tab, walls, um, you get you get a list of different walls that you can draw. Um, but let's say we just want to work with a 300 mil width wall that's just generic at this stage uh, we're not entirely sure what makeup we want or we can just choose one of these uh, different makeups and edit them um, so we can do just click on one so here go on edit type and as you can see here uh, if you go on edit you can see that there's a terracotta finish air insulation etc um, this is not the build up we want all we want now is uh, just a simple 300 mil wall so all you can do is duplicate this wall um, type in 300 mil generic wall press ok and we can uh, we can delete some of these layers because we don't need them uh, I'll just insert so we'll insert a structure here Um, what we want is a block so concrete meets three units that's fine and we'll give that a hundred we'll give this um, 20 for now so just we can round up everything we'll give this uh, 80 this is actually um, a thermal area yeah, that's fine you can just choose uh, Uh, insulation just like that uh, 80 and we want to uh, change this to uh, finish which is brick so we'll just do that uh, common brick will be fine okay so now we have a wall uh, made out of um, 100 mil brick 80 mil insulation 100 mil concrete and 20 mil plaster Press OK. OK. And now we have this basic wall that we just created, 300 mil generic, generic wall, as you can see here. So uh, what we can start doing now is um, draw the walls. So we just simply uh, click. And as you can see here, we have a wall being created. Um, you can see there's four layers to this wall. Um, so what we want to do is uh, make this wall 900, uh, 9,000 mils. So that's nine meters that way. Um, we want to just create nine meters this way as well. So you can see here, once we hover over, we can see that the uh, Revit gives us an indication of where the walls uh, should meet or intersect. There you are. I just want to move this into the center. There you are. Now we've created a box with just simple walls at the end of it. So. If I double click on these elevation views, you can see uh, that Revit has taken us to the um, elevation views. So if we drop down this menu, you can see we're in the east elevation. And as you can see here, we have the two different levels. What we want to do is create another, another level. So a shortcut for that is LV. As you can see here, I'll uh, we'll just do that again. So uh, let's do it just three meters for now. Just like this, press enter. Um, so we can go on the other elevations as well to have a look so we can go on the west elevation as well uh, we can select the different uh, levels and just move them so it's easier to work with I'm just moving uh, the other elevations just over here so if you hover over um, there, and you can just move it like this. So that's level one, and we also want to move level zero just on the side like this. There you are. Um, so at the moment we have these uh, levels at um, distances that don't necessarily make sense. So what I want to do here is just change this to three thousand. 
sorry, not 300, 3,000, like this, and this to 6,000, just like that. And if I click on the walls, if I hold down, if I click tab, I can um, click on all the connected walls. So if I go back on level zero, so you hover over one, you can just select one. If you just press tab, it will it will select all. It will hover. It will highlight all the um, connected walls. So we can go on the wall properties. So we can see the location line, and this is basically where um, you draw the wall from, which is the wall center line. So if I go back on draw wall again, you can see that's the center line here. Center line will, in our case will be 150 mil from either side. Um, you can you can choose to draw it from uh, a different. Uh, a different side as well, so we've selected the uh, exterior face here, just like that. We'll just keep it at center line for now, um, that's fine. Um, so if you go back and select these walls, you can see that the base constraint is level zero, meaning the wall will start from level zero that we've uh, selected. I'll just move these to the side again. This is a different, uh, different view. Um, so if I go back again, select the walls, go back, go back on my elevation. Um, I can see that the walls start from level zero, and we don't have a base offset. So the base offset, if if you want the wall to um, be linked to a certain level, uh, but offsetted by a certain dimension. So what I can do here is 300 apply. Then, if I change this to 300. You can see the wall always keeps this 300 gap there. So I control Z, control Z twice. Um, select the walls again. What I want here is um, for the wall to be constrained to level two. So what I do here is go on top constraint and then level two and click apply. Just like that. So now if I change this level, the wall will always follow that level. And this is very useful in terms of um, whether you want to uh, change your design in the future, it's much easier to change these levels and have everything uh, parametrically linked for it to adapt to, rather than just going on and changing everything. Um, um, so now that we have our wall sorted, you can see that the plaster is inside and the finished face is on the outside. And if we go into the 3D view, we can clearly see that the outdoor is brick and the indoors is um, So this is how you change your levels. I'll do the same here. Just like that. And the same again there. Just like this. So I can go back here and um, measure my walls uh, with the um, aligned dimensions. This is very useful uh, because what with this line, what you can do is um, create links between different walls. Um, so if you go on the, whenever you select a command in, in Revit, you always get this pop up here. Well, not always, uh, most most of the times, but you, you can you can choose which um, faces you want to measure to. So if I select wall faces, I can click on the face here, face here, and then click out. And the same thing here, here, and click out. So I can now, if I select on this wall, what we'll do is constrain this and move this wall. So I can change this dimension to 9,000, the ones that we just created, and this one to uh, 9,000 as well, just like this. And now we have a nine meter by nine meter wall. I can also move these dim dimensions up. Yes. So what I can do is now just go here, wall architectural, and then rather than choose the exterior walls, I can go with the interior walls. Um, this wall looks fine. So it's made out of a 12 mil plaster, make up 100 mil block and 12 mil plaster. So we can just go here um, and just have a wall going from the beginning to the end. As you can see here, this overlap doesn't really work correctly, so that's something wrong with my uh, wall build-up. So I can go and edit, and I'll just move this down one layer. Okay, apply, and hopefully that should work. There you are. 
So now you can see that Robert, uh, Revit has understood that the, this, there's a block continuation here because it's the same material and also the plasterboard is continued as well. Um, so we want to move this wall uh, three meters this way. And we want to create a similar wall three meters again this way. If I select on a wall and press CS, that will create a, a small shortcut, which gives me the same, um, well, it's a shortcut for creating the same wall that I've just selected on. Um, so what I can do here is just add these walls here. I'll press create similar again, just add a wall, just like that. So at the moment, having measured these out, um, so I would like this wall to be three meters and a half and this wall to be uh, two meters, just like this. Um, so what I want to do here, I just want to copy again uh, from this wall, just down over there. Again, I can move this wall inwards like this. So if we go on the 3D view, you can see what we've, we've made. Um, there you are. And if I select on these walls, I can see it goes from level zero and the top constraint is level one. Just like this. So I can go back to level zero again. Um, and now what I want to do is um, create a stairs so I can get to level two. So the way to do that is uh, if we just go in architecture, stairs, we have different options for drawing stairs. We have run, landing and support as well. So our settings for these stairs is base zero up to level one with a base offset of zero. That means it starts from level zero and ends at level one. So what we can do here uh, with a tread of 250 and uh, this is uh, the desired number of um, risers. So if I change this, for example, just like this, Revit will um, Revit will calculate the amount of stairs based on the actual riser and depth information that I feed it just here. So I can turn this back to zero. And as you can see, the, the stairs that we're going to generate now has 18 steps with a depth of 250. So to create a stairs, um, all I have to do is go on straight. You can see how many stairs I'm drawing and how many uh, is remaining. So I'll just do 10 here and then just scroll my mouse over and draw another 10 like this. And I can select this, um, these stairs and just move them in. Move them in like this. And then I can press uh, finish edit mode and there you are. And the stairs, all I need to do now is move it into the right place. So I just go over here and then just move it right in the corner, like this. I'll delete that for now. What I want to do now is make sure um, my walls all, all align. So I can just go over here and then just do this. So if I go on 3D again, I can see that I've created um, a staircase. Um, so what I can do now is draw a section. Um, so the section um, icons just over here on the top. And with the section, I can just cut through the my design. Can move it however I want, and expand the views however I want. Um, so that seems fine. And again, the shortcut by double clicking on the arrow, I can see what I've just drawn. So at the moment we have um, a staircase, um, and we can measure. So if we use the measure in between, we can see that level zero, uh, we'll just click on that again. So we can see that our um, tread is 166.7 mil in that direction and 250 in this direction. Well, that's working fine. So what I can do now is go on level one 
and we're in, when we're in level one, we can see that the walls underneath are grayed out. We can change um, these settings over here. Um, so we can go on uh, different settings. So the base range level zero at the moment, I can change it to level one. And if I click apply, uh, we won't see what's underneath level one. Just turn that back, just like this, and click apply again. Um, so what we want to do now is uh, create a floor for level one. So again, we're in level one again. So what we have to do is go on floor and then draw the outline of my floors. I can select the walls or draw them myself. Um, what I want to do is just select walls like this. And then I need to draw a, another rectangle which indicates the um, stair void that I have. So I'll just do that and click finish. Would you like the walls to go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom? Yes. Uh, Revit always gives us these warnings, um, sometimes uh, just to give some information and sometimes um, it requires an action from us. So the floor roof overlaps the highlighted walls. Would you like to join the geometry and cut the overlapping volume of the walls? Just go ahead and select yes. And now if I go back on my section, I can see that I have a wall just over here built into my walls and I can change I can get a more accurate build up of the walls by just going on fine and viewing what kind of makeup uh, we have just over here so if I go back on level one so we've We've, we've done a, a bit of a mistake. This um, floor is supposed to end here, uh, the top edge of the staircase. So if you double click on this again, you can just click on the void and move it like this and click OK. Again, confirming the same, uh, same prompts. And if we go on section again through here, I can see that my wall and my stairs now meet and now I have a way to get from level zero up to level one. Um, so that's looking fine now. Uh, go back on 3D again. And as you can see here, now we have the walls, we have the lower rooms, and we have the uh, upper floor now as well. So we can also add new walls for the upper floors and um, I think we're going to go with the same layout so what I have to do is just um, follow the center lines that Revit already uh, indicates for us like this and there you are um, so we want to go back to the ground floor. Um, so what we can do now is import some furniture. And um, uh, before that, what we'll actually want to do is um, put in some walls, uh, windows and doors. So we can go in doors over here. Similar to the way that we've created the walls, we have um, a list of doors that we can use. Um, so here you can see we have doors, exterior, double, flush. And we have doors, interior, single. Um, so we'll use these uh, single doors for now and we can just place them here as you can see Revit gives us a useful uh, indication to how uh, these walls uh, the distances between the wall and the door so I think 100 nib is uh, sufficient so we can just click on here and rotate this around we can click on the wall CS to create similar and then we can draw another one just like that Can create a new one just over here. I'll just move this wall so that it's flush with the stairs, just like this. And another useful command uh, in Revit, if you go on modify, there's some very useful commands here. So you can mirror, you can offset, you can align, but you'll you'll end up using a lot of these commands here. So trim and extend, and split element. So I can come here and split this wall and then I can move them 
like this. So I can create a new wall again, just over here for my bathroom. And I want to create an exterior double wall, like the, uh, double door like this. And as you can see, this family has um, insulation caps, etc. Uh, loaded into it, and we can do the same here. So create similar, and just create a wall like this. We can go on the um, insert tab and insert some families, but before we insert them, we have to load them. So Revit has um, a, a library just over here where you can go and uh, bring different families into your project. So uh, what we can do is go on um, furniture, we can go on beds, and then we have these different beds that we can view on the side. So this bed seems fine for now. Um, so what we can do now is go on, sorry, um, structure, uh, component, place a component. We'll temporarily save our project for now. So I'll just save it project one on my desktop. And then we can place, and uh, it will load the most recent family we've imported and we can place um, those families in just like that. Um, so what I want to do is um, load, oh, sorry, not that. Uh, load through the families. So I can go on UK, um, furniture, tables, and then we have these different tables that we can bring in. So I think a dining table would be quite useful. Again, structure, place component, and now we have this dining table that we can place. We'll just place here. This actually we'll get rid of these walls to create a more open plan layout. So I'll just move this here. You can also go on the um, fixtures and bring in some bathtubs. So I'll just go with this bathtub for now. And again, we can place the component just like that. Hopefully you get the idea of how you can import um, different families. There's a lot of resources online where you can download and install different families online. So uh, whether you want something that's not available for you or you want to model your own family, um, you'll be able to do that and import them in the same way as you have here. Okay, um, so now we just want to populate the rest of the floor with a few walls, just like this. And just really clean everything up. So just like that. These can be bedrooms, um, this can be a uh, bathroom just over here. Um, so again, if we go back to the 3D view, and rotate around using using um, shift and the scroll wheel. You can do attach bottom to base uh, because we, for some reason this wall has not is coming through. So I just like that. You can see that now we've created a cube, and we've added all these rooms with the different doors. Yeah. So what we can do now is add a few windows. So if you go on the architecture tab window you can add uh, you can see that we've got this window tab open up here different dimensions so for a toilet we want a, we want a relatively smaller window so we can just just do that and if we want a bigger window you can just uh, choose them from the side just like this can do the same here so window, smaller windows, over here, and bigger windows, over there, over here, all these different rooms, just like that. And let's say I, um, I have a feature in my design where um, there's a big ribbon window from the 
bottom floor all the way to the up upper floor so what I can do here is go on architecture walls and rather than going on these walls I can create a curtain wall so it's uh, completely made out of glass and I can start drawing this wall just on top of this wall like this you can see that there's an error uh, highlighted walls overlap one of them may be ignored when Revit finds room boundaries etc that's fine what we want to do is select on this wall and um, curtain walls have a property so if I go and edit type and click on automatically embed apply we, we can embed that wall into uh, the the um, existing structural wall and if I go on 3D again I can see that feature come up select on this wall and give it a top constraint room level 2 because we don't want to go any higher than that So um, the last thing for uh, that is left for this this um, project, um, you get the idea about populating different furniture. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that for now. I just want to show how you can model a simple project, um, two two stories. So what you can do is go on level two, uh, level one, and then go on the roof um, roof by footprint um, command here. Now we have different <clears throat> options for creating the roof. We can create a pitched roof, we can create a hipped roof, we can create a sloped roof, we can create also a flat roof. Um, so again, different walls have different makeup. Um, so we can go with this uh, pitched roof makeup for now. And then we can choose the walls to build the roof from. However, you see this tick box just over here define slope so this is very important when modeling roofs because if I don't define any slopes like this um, click OK uh, go on 3d view um, this should be on level 2 so we just change that to level 2 apply you can see that I have got a flat roof that's because there's no slopes defined at all in my roof if I double click on the roof I can select one of the um, one of the edges and define a slope there click apply and then wait for it to and then finish it just over here you can see because this edge is defined by a slope that we have a slope truth going in this direction um, at the moment we have a big gap <laughs> between the uh, roofs and the floors so what we can do here is just select the and then um, if I select these walls on the outside these structural walls just like this and click on this attached top base and we can click on this roof and as you can see um, we've created a, a sloped roof just like that. final option we can do is um, a pitched roof or a hipped roof so what we can do again is go and edit footprint select this wall just over here and define another slope apply so now we have two edges that are sloped click finish and because these two edges are sloped, Revit will calculate the midpoint and um, calculate and understand that your what your requirement is is a pitch roof. And if we want all, <clears throat> there you are. So the only thing is missing at the moment is um, these walls. They don't go right all the way to the top. Um, we can choose to attach these walls to the roof again in a similar way, or we can just add a ceiling to our first floor so we can, again we go on level we go on level one architecture ceiling automatic ceiling and then by just um, uh, we'll just do sketch ceiling for now and then we can click on click on the walls Oops, so we have an extra line there we we'll just delete that Try that again. Discard changes, yes. So ceiling, sketch ceiling, select walls, and then press OK. And now if I go on the section, you can see that we have a ceiling. Um, we want to move it to level two without any offset. I click apply. And now in our section, you can see that we have ceiling walls 
we have a uh, roof void over here we have all uh, our uh, levels and the furniture shows up as well if you go in 3d we can see that project um, or just like that one thing is left uh, is the uh, floor structure for the ground floor so you can go back again on level zero and just add the floor in the same manner just like that and click OK and if we go in section you can see that now we have a complete structure finished um, the only thing is missing is uh, we'll add a ground floor just um, so everything is clear so what I can do is uh, add a topography so if you just click four points just over here click OK go on the site plan so if you go in section again you can see that we have um, model this and we can extend these walls on below and add foundations here and thank you for following this tutorial